Welcome to Pick Up and Deliver, the podcast where I pick up my audio recorder as I head out for a walk and deliver an episode to you while I stroll around. I'm Brendan Riley. Well, good morning, listeners. It is a cool, blustery kind of early December day here in suburban Chicago. It is uh, oppressively cloudy, which means kind of a dark and gloomy day. If it were a little bit colder, I would think we, this could be snow and weather, but it's not that cold. So I think it's probably rain and weather, which is going to be gross because it is cold enough that the rain would be really unpleasant to walk in or drive in. We're nearing the end of the semester, so I have a ton of grading to do. So I'm not looking forward to that, but it is important to enjoy myself as well, hence the walk and the conversation. Now that we're in December, my family is firmly entrenched in the holiday festivities. I was raised Catholic, so we do celebrate Christian Christmas, although my family isn't particularly religious. We mostly celebrate it as a secular holiday, which I would argue it is because the federal government has an official holiday on the 25th of December. Hence, it is a secular holiday, even if lots of people have a religious purpose to it as well. Uh, Not denigrating that religious purpose, just pointing out that we have a non-religious government that has a holiday on December 25th, hence secular holiday. All right. I really enjoy the ideas and the philosophy behind most Christmas movies, so I thought today I would do a theme storm. I haven't done one of these in a while, so as a reminder, or for you new listeners, a theme storm is an episode where I choose a particular theme and I brainstorm some ideas for games that somebody might make out of that theme. I think the last time I did one was for Hamilton, so that gives you an idea. I think that was early in the COVID times. It was probably right about when Disney Plus released the Hamilton movie for people to watch. It's probably when I did that. So... What I thought I would do today is a theme storm focused on holiday movies. And this time around, I've chosen classic Hollywood movies. I think I may do another one thinking particularly about the genre of sort of made-for-TV, cheesy B Hollywood movies, the stuff you see on Hallmark and Lifetime. I don't know if your family watches those. We watch them. I enjoy them uh, 40% authentically, 60% ironically. Uh, My wife is probably the other way, 60% uh, authentically, 40% ironically. But we like watching them together and goofing on them a little bit. Um, But that's not what I'm talking about today. Today I'm going to give you four different Christmas movies, and I'll talk a little bit about each one and what I think might make for interesting games set around the theme of those movies. I thought we'd start with It's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful Life, of course, the tale of George Bailey, played by Jamie Stewart, And it's become a kind of classic stereotype tale of a man who is so upset with his life, he's on the verge of suicide. And just as he tries to kill himself, he's rescued by an angel who shows him what the, how horrible the world would be if he hadn't existed, which is of course, all of these amazing things that he did throughout his life that he hadn't thought about, but the ripples of the community, um, the ripples that went through the community hold him up. And of course, at the end of the film, He realizes what a joyous life he has, and the whole town comes together to save him from his uncle's stupidity. Uh, Even though, (laughs) at the heart of it, this problem is caused by theft. And, uh, I mean, I I really like the the Saturday Night Live original ending, the It's a Wonderful Life, in which they find out that Mr. Potter kept the $8,000 that the uncle took to the bank, and so then the townspeople find Uncle Potter and they kill him. Or Colonel, uh, Mr. Potter. They pull him out of his wheelchair and beat him to death. It's, it's really funny. Anyway, so it got me thinking, what would, what would a game based on this movie be? And it feels like one of the places the game has room is, is in the economic simulation. So I was thinking, what if you played, you know, this is a town with lots of people in it, and the evil Mr. Potter is sort of domineering everyone. What if you played a number of employees at the Bailey Savings and Loan? doing your best to help people survive in these difficult times. So it would be some sort of economic game focused on the idea of helping people make it through difficult economic times, especially when opposed by a game-controlled, ravenous capitalist who is constantly interfering with the market, buying up houses and making conditions worse. I don't really know how it would work as a game, but it would be an interesting 
co-op, maybe in the, the semi-co-op vein of a, something like a, Australia, where you're just trying to do the best you can for you and your customers, but if as a group you fail to fend off Mr. Potter, then everybody loses. <laughs> it seems like there'd be something there. I don't know exactly how it would work, but uh, that's the approach that I would see for this particular game. It seems like there might be some sort of interesting mechanism in exploring a game, exploring somehow the story that if you weren't there, what would happen? That would be more of like a role-playing game thing. And I don't know how that would be fun, because one player has to be the focus of it, unless you have a whole family that's gone into despair. And so the, the idea is to see what happened to the whole family. But as a multiplayer game, I think It's a Wonderful Life is a tough nut to crack, unless you're going to make it an economic co-op shared euro or an economic semi-co-op euro game that's my guess anyway the next movie the next sort of holiday classic i was thinking about was home alone home alone seemed like an interesting idea for a game to play several different possibilities here can't be a co-op because there's only one protagonist so a one versus many game i think in the vein of i can't remember what it's called there was a game that came out last year a one versus many game where one player is the dungeon, is, one player is a hero going into the dungeon, and all the other many are enemies attacking that hero. So the idea is the one versus many is reversed because the many are the evil and the one is the heroic figure. From the reviews I read, it didn't sound like that went over all that well, but it seems like Home Alone could work as a tower defense game, similar to Ghost Stories, in which you could have maybe multiple McAllister children, if you wanted to play more of a ghost stories model, where there's all sorts of spaces in the house and all sorts of things that you can get and different places that you put them would result in different levels of effectiveness. Probably the highest level of effectiveness would be if you're able to replicate the situation from the movie. But the challenge there is that it takes energy, it takes energy and time. It takes your limited resources to move the different props to the different spots. And so Sometimes you have to settle with putting the blowtorch on the front door instead of the back door, or you have to put the, put the iron in a different spot or something. I don't, you know, there's a variety of things, perhaps. It would be interesting to have the game have two stages. Um, maybe you have the board be double-sided, and the, the first side of the board is the outside of the house that you're defending, and then the second, board of, the second side of the board is the inside of the house, and have the game be slightly different. When you're defending the outside of the house, you are placing traps, um, running, moving, moving yourself around, trying to anticipate what the other players are going to do, or what the villain is going to, what the game-controlled villains are going to do. When you're on the inside of the house, then you're in more danger because they maybe it could switch to like having minis, and part of the game is actually running through the house and avoiding, avoiding the villains. You could have sneaking elements, so like if you've made noise, they chase you. But again, it's really hard to see how this would be a, how this wouldn't be a solo game. Because I don't think it would be fun to play the bad guys. So it feels like the bad guys need to be game controlled. So then you either have to have multiple heroes, in which case now Kevin isn't home alone. He's home with his siblings. Somehow the parents left without the siblings. Or I don't know, what would be the other way? I don't know how you'd approach that. You know, if you wanted a, a more, um, a simpler style game, you could have a sort of retheme of Mousetrap, but based on Home Alone. And so the big... The whole part of the game is actually setting up the traps for when the villains come. And it all happens before, before that bell rings when Kevin doesn't get to eat his mac and cheese. And that the, the cavalcade of death would just be at the end of the game when you trigger the trap to see if it worked. So those are my two ideas for a Home Alone game. A tower, style, tower defense style game or a, a mass market mouse trap retheme. Right, the third movie that I wanted to address was Miracle on 34th Street. Now, this is bar none the best Christmas movie. If you don't think so, you need to go watch it again, because it is. In this movie, an old man gets a job as Santa Claus at Macy's, the New York department store famous for its Santa Claus area. It turns out that he believes himself to be Santa Claus. And then the film challenges us to think about, could he be Santa Claus? Is he not Santa Claus? Et cetera, et cetera. Well, when a je jealous co-worker accuses him of being crazy and he gets sent to the insane asylum, he loses hope. He ends up on trial. And the trial is to determine whether he's crazy or not. And the question being asked is, is he crazy because he thinks he's Santa Claus? And if you haven't seen the movie, it goes from there. It's a trial. So it really sort of begs the question of, 
what kind of game could you make out of this? Again, the challenge is that there's not the kind of conflict you would expect in, in, you know, the, in board games, right? There's not a place for the player to be the agent because the story is being told so well. So it seems like the main place you'd have to play would be in the uh, trial. There have been a few games that have come out that have focused on trials. Mo most recently, there's a game called Unforgiven, and it's about the trial of one of the Abraham Lincoln assassination conspirators, the one who is most widely recognized as having been perhaps not actually involved. And that game uses the same mechanisms that Seven Wonders Duel did, with the idea of this kind of abstracted jury. That's harder to do in It's a Wonderful Life because in that game, the plot points of the trial come out as a kind of sparring, intellectual sparring between the two lawyers. I'm not really sure how you'd play that through. You know, the other, the other part of it would be perhaps playing as Chris, trying to do good and convince people of the rightness of the world. Uh, these two things, I, I don't, it's really tricky to think about how it would make a good game. I was thinking about, is there a party game in here somewhere? What about a party game where you write letters to Santa and he tries to figure out how to solve them in a way that doesn't use magic? Because one of the things about the Santa, the Kris Kringle character, is that you never actually see him do anything magical. Everything he does, it sort of involves the manipulation of people, and the resulting thing is the miracle. So perhaps there's a pitch-style party game in which the, the players take turns addressing, thinking about problems as Kris Kringle, and others propose answers to those problems. How would you solve them? Or maybe even it's maybe even it uses the, the creative storytelling elements like um, Machine of Death, where we have a scenario, and then as a group we have to say how Kris Kringle would solve that problem, and obstacles would pop up in his way, and we have to figure out how you get around those obstacles. That seems like the best way, unless you could figure out a way to do the trial. But I don't know how you do the trial in an interesting way, unless it's about sort of convincing the judge. Then again, I, it's really hard to see how you have agency on both sides, especially when generally you'd want Kris Kringle to win. Everybody wants to be on the side of the way this story is supposed to turn out. This is the trickiest part about doing a theme based on a game, is that the conflict of how the story is supposed to turn out is difficult to tease apart. Well, the final theme I wanted to suggest today is perhaps the granddaddy of all Christmas story themes, and that is A Christmas Carol. This, of course, started as the original Charles Dickens story, which is sometimes credited as bringing back or returning Christmas to a place of prominence in Victorian society, and that the prominence of this story, the expansiveness of its ideas, was really... Um, did a lot. It's also the most parodied Christmas story. A uh, number of times I've seen somebody write a story where the end result is the, or the number of Christmas movies I've seen that use the Christmas Carol model is pretty high. It's a regularly reused thing. So that begs the question of what, what would a game about the Christmas Carol be like? It feels like perhaps you could do a sort of Lord of the Ring. You, know, you could think about the model of the Lord of the Rings cooperative game. You know, in Lord of the Rings, we have a series of boards, and each board involves the players sharing resources and working together to advance their cause and complete challenges. And if they successfully complete the challenges, then they win the game. But the challenges get harder and harder, and the challenges are sort of abstracted, right? Like, you could play Lord of the Rings, strip off the theme, and just leave the mechanisms, and it would work fine. It might not be quite as compelling. You don't know why you're doing what you're doing. I think the, uh, the overall effect of a Christmas, a Christmas Carol version of this kind of game would be the same. That you'd have this story that you're trying to resolve, and you resolve it through shared action. The, the players, obviously, would be the, th the three ghosts, or five, four ghosts, that visit Scrooge. Maybe in the prelude, you play as Marlowe, and you have to try to scare Scrooge into... And, and warn Scrooge about the upcoming ghosts. And then you play the Ghost of Christmas Past, the Ghost of Christmas Present, Ghost of Christmas Future, and deploying your various resources would involve convincing, you know, developing different emotions in Scrooge so that he 
comes to realize the wrongness of the error of his ways. It seems like it would work. It seems like you could literally just take the Reiner Kinesia Lord of the Rings game and retheme it without too much difficulty. I don't really see how that game would work if you were Scrooge. Because again, well, one, Scrooge is sort of a passive agent in the story. He doesn't really get to do anything. So it's hard to think about how you would do a narrative story, again, where Scrooge is the central protagonist, but everybody can't be Scrooge. That is probably the biggest challenge of all of these theme storms, is this idea of the nature of the stories, but also the nature of the season, right? Christmas is generally described meant to be a time of giving, a time of sharing, and so trying to think of a competitive game in which you're giving and sharing just doesn't work. People aren't supposed to be competing at Christmas time. I think if I do another of these this season, I will think about the more contentious Christmas movies, and perhaps there's room there, maybe uh, in Jingle All the Way, the competition to get the robot statue or the robot toy, for instance, would have some fruitful room for board game development. But that is another another idea for another show because I've just about finished for today. What do you think of these themes? Is there an obvious game idea I missed? Head over to Board Game Geek Guild 3269 and let me know in the comments in the forums there. Or send me an email, Brendan at Rattlebox Games. I look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, I hope your uh, holiday movie watching is enjoyable. And I hope that your next walk is as pleasant as mine was. Good day. Brought to you by Rattlebox Games.